I want to tell about a uh, recent experience I had in a local Northern Virginia court. A few years ago, I had offered to audio record a hearing for a father in Alexandria, Virginia, Juvenile Domestic Relations District Court. As I recall, the judge gave me a hard time acting like it was an unusual re request, but allowed it, that is, the use of a small digital voice recorder. After providing this service to several people, I decided to start producing transcripts for them as well, using voice-to-text software. I learned that I simply needed to become a notary, register a trade name at the business office, and sign the circuit court logbook for court reporters. I know of no other requirements in Virginia for court reporters. Recently, I started using my Sony camcorder for the excellent quality 5.1 surround sound audio only, pointing the lens at the wall or bench, therefore video recording nobody in the courtroom. So it's a high quality, natural sounding audio recording track separable from the blank video with editing software. Uh, Friday, because I had the camcorder, the, ex the Alexandria security screener directed me to see the General District Chief Judge Haddock for approval to enter with and use the camcorder. John Bowserman, attorney for the party who had hired me, accompanied me and the Chief Judge approved use of the camcorder. However, J and DR Judge Constance H. Fergole refused to allow it. She allowed only the small, inexpensive digital voice recorder I used for backup. She acted like the camcorder was a snake that might bite her. She stated absolutely no reason for her emotional, irrational exclusion of its use. I had an excellent $1,000 high quality audio recording device that allows for easier transcription, but she refused its use. Absolutely no reason at all. This was something different. You can't have any of that. They really just don't want cameras in the courts. They're terrified of cameras. Why is that? This really made my blood boil. I turned on the small Mickey Mouse device and went to sit away from the recorder's table because one, the court reporter table in this courtroom is hidden behind the huge judge's bench, blocking the view of the judge and one party's table. I couldn't see the parties. A court reporter, I think, should have clear view of the judge, the parties, and witnesses. Maybe it helps to read lips. You know, you should be able to see the, the parties. At least as good as those who are in the gallery, the audience. I felt cramped in a corner. It's a stupid layout for reporters. Second, I was so angry I thought about just leaving out of the protest because I know how hard it is to produce a transcript without a good audio recording. It's hard enough with good audio. Three, the voice re recorder has a light on it when recording that's visible from several yards away. But I got up and moved. That was something different. You can't have any of that. The guardian ad litem asked why I had moved away from the recorder spot. Why? Why? The recording device is doing all the work. There's really no need for me to sit there. I could see the recording light was on. So I reluctantly returned to babysit a cheap recorder. What if it failed? I had no backup if it did, so what could I do? There was no reason for me to sit there. Prior to her swearing me in, the other attorney, Mr. Uh, Mr. Chinchilla, mentioned that he saw me speaking with the party who hired me and asked if I was really a court reporter. I presented my court reporter ID and the judge swore me in. I swore an oath to produce an accurate recording of the proceeding, period. What difference does it make whether or not I happen to know the party who hired me if I'm using an electronic recording device? 
It's not like I'm a stenographer, a scribe 2,000 years ago, or an interpreter who can alter the physical recording. You can't alter an audio recording and even if you can, that's a good reason for both the court and the parties to be allowed to use their own recording devices as a check on each other. Somebody wants to question my uh, tampering with my equipment, that's why the court should have their equipment as well, and vice versa. And also, why are titles 16 and 17 of the Virginia Code called courts of record and courts not of record, respectively? I mean, why would you have a court not of record? Well, I understand that it has to do with uh, how cases are reported and, and published. But this leads folks to think it's legitimate not to electronically record all hearings. The fact that courts don't already electronically record all hearings is blatant evidence of corruption. They don't want their treachery electronically recorded. In my experience, judges deny oral requests to record. You must submit a written motion in order for it to be granted because the judges don't want their denials in the record either. So if you just go into court without a recording device on and say, can I use this? They're gonna say no. That's been my experience. Uh, you have to submit a written motion so that it's in your record if they do deny your use of your hearing using a recording device for your hearing. Now, anyone doubting my accuracy or honesty as a court reporter need only check the transcript against the audio recording. Again, this is why all courts should both electronically record and allow parties to do the same with their own recording devices. If a transcript is questioned, they can check both the courts and the parties recording the proceedings. The hearing was taken, was take, this hearing was taking longer than I had expected. So I got up to ask my friend to go feed my parking meter. It would have taken me 30 seconds away from the recorder's desk. But I had nothing to do that I could do if the device failed anyway. If she had just ignored me while I handed my friend my car keys. That's so he could get money out and put it in the meter. But that was something different. And I interrupted the proceeding. Can't have any of that. Why attorneys can freely roam around in front of the judge while in court? Are reporters restricted from leaving their table for a few seconds to take care of business? I'm not a stenographer, I wasn't doing anything except babysitting an electronic device. When I got up, the judge got upset and told me, whatever you want to say, take it outside the courtroom. So the judge calls a recess without even asking why I got up. Maybe she needed to go to the bathroom and I was the excuse. When I came back in the courtroom, I was scolded by the bailiff to stay with the equipment. I would have if the judge hadn't ordered me outside. I told him the equipment has a visible recording light and was still recording. Now since he had questioned my character in openness and good faith while I was waiting for the judge to return from her recess, I handed Mr. Chinchilla my card showing that I wear several hats. I'm an electrician, a court reporter, a parent's rights advocate, a videographer and a guitarist. And the card also included my website, exiledfathers.org. Uh-oh, red flag, right? When the judge came back in several minutes later, the attorney, Mr. Chinchilla, made a big deal about my card implying a conflict of interest because of exiled fathers. Even though it says parents' rights advocate, I'm an advocate for equal parenthood. I support mothers and fathers being treated fairly by the court. So this was totally bogus. Despite uh, Attorney Bowserman's vehement defense, this judge in effect found me guilty of conflict of interest without my being able to defend myself or being voir dire to answer questions. 